Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, actually, people say I always start the show, you know, and then I talk about coming over here and, you know, thinking about what's going on in my life and the world and the people I know and what the experience of, of being a human being at this time, or really pretty much in my lifetime, almost any time in there, there's been enormous change, there's been enormous challenges for each individual person and what we call countries and what we call religions, always there's drama, there's change, there's, there's experience of how can we know, how can we know love? How can we know joy? How can we know truth? And every one of us, every one of us in every country wants to know that answer wants to come into that remembrance. And something in us as human beings just knows and knows and knows and knows that there is an answer, that there is an experience of the purpose of this life, the love of this life, the joy of this life, the, the love of life, the joy of joy. And we do the show over and over and over and over again to help us remember and to bring that recognition, that remembrance, that love and that joy out to just allow that vibration of love to go out. I mean, recently I've had a chance to watch a lot of the shows because we were turning them into DVDs, all the different formats as the formats have changed. And we want to put them all on DVD and take them to, you know, a different location. So, God forbid, in case something happened, there would always be a record of Bridging Heaven and Earth. So, if any of you were worried, we're good. But watching these shows, really, I mean, watching or listening or having them available and hearing a lot of them, I mean, the purpose was always the same. The intention was always the same. The purpose was love. The purpose was to experience the vibration of love and spread it and to have it realized, to have it remembered. And when we, sh you know, on every show, there's somewhere along the sh show or the credits dedicated to the oneness. Now, what does that mean? What is the oneness in a world that looks like there's so much separation? I mean, what is the mystery of this life is that something in us knows there is a oneness. There is this God, this energy. And yet we're in separate bodies. We seemingly are in separate countries where the line is here and this is Canada, this is Mexico, and this is, this is... Indiana, this is Iowa, this is France, probably not right next to each other, so it's not that bad geographically, but I mean, we know, we know that those are not the differences, really, that there is a oneness, there is the sameness, there is that love that we all are. And then how do we come into that remembrance? And we all know that now, in a way, although there's always that now time, that now is the time, when that duality, when that separation will exist on that level of that will be in different bodies, will seemingly come from different countries and have seemingly different religions. But the overriding experience of our lives will be that universal love, will be that oneness, will be that God. And the joyousness of that experience will just bubble up from this earth and then the kingdom of heaven will be here. The kingdom of heaven is always here. It's just how do we come into that remembrance? I mean, tonight's guest who you've seen if you watched the show before, Michael Tamora has been on countless times over the last years. And we were, you know, he's staying in my house and we we're talking about how do we come into that remembrance? And that's what, you know, this Bridging Heaven and Earth show is dedicated to. And that's what Michael's life has been dedicated to for year after year, year after year. I mean, he's just a great, long-standing spiritual teacher, healer, healer, clairvoyant. He started all the psychic institutes in the United States, pretty much. He's been teaching psychics to be psychics for 25, 30 years. He's the author of an extraordinary new book, You Are the Answer. And his life is dedicated to that remembrance. And again, we're honored to have, you know, Michael here to share his experience, to share his tools, to share his knowledge of the coming into that joy, into that remembrance, because we know it's there. We know 
we want it. We know we are it. In some level, we know we are it, and yet we feel somehow separate from ourselves and each other. And the time is now not to feel that way. We want to be in that love. We want to know that love is the answer and we are that love. So we also have some beautiful music videos, some beautiful sacred geometry videos. We're going to show, if you've been watching the show recently, we're in the middle of this incredible Bridging Heaven and Earth art project. So paintings are coming in from all over the world. These extraordinarily gifted, magical, collaborative artists are all creating a new piece based on the theme of Bridging Heaven and Earth, and we're going to show them on the shows, and we're going to have websites, and, and the energy, think of the energy of that, of all these acupuncture points, all these incredibly creative people thinking about visualizing, visioning, and then manifesting this piece based on that oneness, that love. And the energy of that is just very powerful. So we're just so honored to get start getting these paintings, and we want to show them all to you. So we'll show you a few tonight. And, you know, it's an opportunity. I mean, it's an opportunity for us all to one more time be said, remember that whatever you think you are, you're more. Whatever you think you are, you're more. I'll say it once more. Whatever you think you are, you're more, much, much more. And we can have that experience. So join me in a short meditation, and we'll have a video, and then Michael will be with us. So it's an opportunity. Thank you. So we're going to, the first video tonight is Somewhere Over the Rainbow. It's a beautiful video by a good friend of Bridgings, Guy Monroe. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. So here it is, Somewhere Over the Rainbow.
brightness of day. I like the dark, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people passing by. As if friends shaking hands, saying, "How do you do?" They're really saying, "I, I love you." I hear babies cry, and I watch them grow. They learn much more than we'll know, and I think to myself. What a wonderful world! World. Someday I wish upon a star. Wake up where the clouds are far behind. Me, where troubles melt like lemon drops. I above the chimney top. That's where you'll find me. Oh, so. Hi everybody, welcome back. So we're here with Michael. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. And also, I just want to say the painting in between us is one of the paintings that has been、uh, part of the Bridging Heaven and Earth Art Project. It's Stairway to Heaven with、uh, by Steve Madden, just a great friend of Bridging, and you'll see, you know, you'll see it's an amazing painting. So, Michael, welcome again.、So. Thank you very much.、It's、great to be here again. Yeah, it really is great to have. <laughs> Countless <laughs> times I've been on your show. It really is. I feel、time. old. <laughs> I know. We're gonna have to switch chairs one of these days.、Uh, so we were talking last night that you know every time almost seems critical. Every time seems that you know, like I said at the opening, traumatic and、mm. a lot going on.、But、we were talking that it seems like this particular time there's just a lot of intensity for a lot of people. Why don't you talk to that a little bit? It's yeah, why don't you laugh about it? <laughs> Fine. How do you do? I asked the first question. <laughs> Actually, you know, some of this intensity—if you can't laugh—it's going to be insane.、Right. And I've heard more <laughs> times in the last maybe month, month and a half, from people the word "overwhelm." You know, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. It's just so intense. And、uh, earlier in the audience, we were talking, and and somebody says、uh, it, it seems like time is speeding up so fast, and and it is. It's it's just everything's going so fast, and the world is just going so fast, and everybody's trying to, who tries to keep up with it, just burn out and spin out, and and so what's been happening is the consciousness of humanity is rising up. I would say,、mm, just in the last few years, that the collective consciousness of humanity has gotten up to a place that's actually starting to become, you know, conscious and and positive. And、uh, even in the light of all the seeming negativity、exactly. and wars and bombings and all. Yeah. So as a whole, it's it's an amazing phenomenon that happens as as the whole of consciousness. So. Some of the people who are, say, more conscious, might be aware of God. There's so much negativity and things like that. But on the whole, 
it's come up to a place where we can actually begin <laughs> until fairly recently it's it was so much in the negative as a as a sum total and now we're finally into a positive level of human consciousness and and this is what's accelerating or seemingly accelerating things so fast and one of the things that's making things so overwhelmingly intense for people uh, individually is we're all being challenged by the same energy and you were talking about love as the most powerful force and as this energy we can call love starts to intensify people have this concept of love being sweet kind and gentle <laughs> and ultimately it is but as it's affecting us it's tearing off everything that's not one everything that's divided against any areas where we have allowed ourselves to be divided and conquered by others or by our own thoughts and whatnot and so all of those areas where we're holding division inside of our being is being challenged slapped around so to speak or at least that's what it feels like a lot of uh, people have been talking about God, i feel like i'm dying and they are the wrecking the part that they've recognized yes or identified that they so have long. to let go yeah right. so so the identity where they've identified as this is who i am and it's really not and so this is the area where the ego holds on to uh, a set of pictures that says this is i have to have this or else i won't survive this is who i am and don't don't you know threaten don't mess, it. With, don't mess it. with it yeah and so so those things are just being battered until and it's it seems like it's being battered if you're resisting it if you're not resisting it it's a welcome healing and a relief it's like oh good i don't have to hold on to that anymore i don't have to keep up with this pretense or whatever and just so that people would love me or accept me or anything like that and so you kind of let go of it and and you go great take it <laughs> I, i'm ready yeah, to die it? yeah, yeah right. and that and, part of me was never really alive anyway exactly and that's the part that's been dragging me down that's the part that's been causing me illness and and uh, uh being unwell in a emotional level mental level psychic levels everything and so so once you recognize that it's it's a great liberation it's a great thing of thank you it's take it away and and we're on the stairway to heaven yeah. <laughs> yeah and so that feeling of dying is those parts that's been entrapped those parts that's been imprisoned in these areas in these pictures of you have to be this way this is perfect this is your expectation from yourself and other people of if you don't stay there all is lost and and once you realize that's not true the sooner you get rid of that sooner you let go of that the freer you are and the more responsive you become the more joyous everything is and then life really starts to happen and um, uh, earlier too uh, there are several people we were talking about motivation one of the most difficult times now for especially people who have been seeking on a spiritual level they've been studying they've been practicing meditating and they're finding themselves in a place of no motivation yeah like a dead end yeah know, it's dead. like well i've been doing this and and gee you know i thought i was going to be feeling joyous and blissful and all of this stuff and and actually well i don't feel like working anymore and and it's too much of a problem to go over there and put all that effort in well why is that it's because in the earlier times in their life their motivation this great ambition and motivation was based on fear you know how to avoid this thing i'm afraid of so if i don't succeed i'm doomed and the thing that they're they were afraid of is non-identity failure how, how would you yeah it's it? ultimately what you were saying in the introduction the ultimately all failure i think comes to the failure to have love and not even to have love from a certain person yeah, but it's just to be able to, to experience love. love yeah and so uh that's so scary and and it's like the the doom of total isolation and banishment so we're we'll do anything to to avoid that and that becomes for most people the average person out there are, is motivated by avoiding of that fear 
and they'll perform, they'll, they'll put their heart and soul into excelling, they'll put everything into making the money or getting the success or marrying the right person or whatever. And if you really start to break that down, when a person starts to look more inward and starts to meditate, start to practice some spiritual levels, all of a sudden their fear starts to fall off the things they're afraid of. And and the less they're afraid of, pretty soon they go, why am I doing this for? <laughs> right. Who needs this? Who needs this? Yeah. Right. And and all of a sudden they start to re-examine everything and they go, I don't need this. I, I can let this go. And the more they let go, at first, it becomes kind of, who cares? You know, it's it's, well, I'm not that motivated to go do that. I'm not motivated to do this. And you would consider like clearing a space, however. And once that space is cleared enough, then the true motivation right. or something that's closer to what we might call inspiration it emerges from inside when when you're disengaged from all this the entrapment of of being in this world and and what you have to do to to survive seemingly and if you let go of that all of a sudden you become in this neutral space just like in driving a stick shift and you go into neutral and you're disengaged from the gears so once you're disengaged and in neutral then an amazing thing happens, which is from within one's own being, this givingness, you know, nature, the truth, one's true being, the oneness of being. Once we're being, everybody experiences this, when, when you start to relax and you let yourself be, you naturally become very giving. It's a natural, you can't help it. You're full and you're yeah, overflowing. You're overflowing. Right. And that's true givingness. And a lot of people, uh, get burnt out because they're trying to give to this person. I got to be a good person and, and give to this person. Or this cause or this country or anything. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of effort overriding everything. And that's not true in order to try to give because they know giving is the right thing to do. And yet, if you relax and if you become neutral, the givingness is already there. It's like a stream that's constantly flowing and you become part of that stream and it just naturally flows out of you. It takes no effort. And so sometimes people say, gee, you know, you're giving people healing, you know, day in and day out and hours on, on end. And don't you ever get tired? Well, sometimes, you know, the body gets tired sitting around, <laughs> sitting right. around all the right. time, sitting around and talking. Talk <laughs> We're exhausted already. <laughs> <laughs> because it needs to move around a little bit. <laughs> but I, I don't get tired. I don't get tired. And, and the, because the energy is flowing and, and there's no uh, effort. Yeah, we talk about it as like love in motion. It's mm -hmm. just love overflowing. Flowing, yeah. Right. And so the true level of giving this is if you, it's like filling up a cup and your own cup and let's say you're half empty and you fill it up and fill it up until it starts to overflow and just because it's overflowing you don't stop you just keep on filling it up then the overflow is what goes to everyone else and you're not ever unfull no you're like you're wrong. full so yeah. so you're not holding on to the overflow it's surplus you don't need that the, up to the brim of the cup, you need that. It's right. like your, your daily vitamins. And, and then if you have extra vitamins, you give it away. It's like that. And it's, that's part of what's starting to uplift the consciousness of the whole, of globally. There's so much more mm, permission to give. And sometimes, unfortunately, uh, a lot of times human beings don't have permission unless there's great suffering, great tragedy, great drama and trauma. And, and they go, oh my God, this person's really hurt. I'm going to stop what I'm doing and I want to give. And, and so unfortunately on one side, because they have to wait until somebody's hurt or there's a tragedy, you don't have to wait, you know, it's, it's available all the time. But the good news is, well, when there is one, it does open everybody up more. And, and we've had a string of tragedies on a large scale. And because of the TV and internet and everything else, everybody finds out about it within the day instead of waiting a long time. Nothing's really hidden. Uh, the 90s, I think, started this era of no more secrets. 
you know. And and uh, now there are more and more people. There are more and more psychics coming out of the closet, and people who thought they were the furthest from being psychic, and they were just average Joe Do's and normal people and living a normal life, and they're starting to turn on. And they're starting to go, hey, I hear voices. I see things. I'm seeing, gee, I just saw somebody walk across the room. I'm getting messages from the other side. I, you know, all kinds. I've, I had astral travel, out of body experience. Um, and then you have all those uh, people who die and then come back. You know, it's, I'm, I guess when they die permanently, <laughs> They're dead again. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of born again, they're, yeah, they're dead, dead again. again. No, it's, it's an interesting thing. We try to. Yeah. <laughs> One time, it was really great. Raphael, my wife, she's you know obviously psychic too, and and uh, uh, her sister, after their parents, uh, their their father died, uh, her sister had this vision, and she's she's. You know, very devout Catholic, scientist, skeptic, you know, doesn't believe in most of this stuff. And Raphael's always been the black sheep of the family. But uh, her sister has this vision of the fa her father coming to visit her in spirit and saying, you know, you don't know what death is like. The real death is nothing like what you imagine. And she was very shocked. And then she go he goes on to tell her all kinds of things. That at the very end, what she said is, I'm very concerned about your sister's husband. It's me. Yeah, wow. The other sister's not married. Right. So, wow. so, who is it? And so she knew exactly who he was talking right. about. And she goes, why? why? Right. Well, I see him all the time with the dead people. He seems so comfortable with yeah. that. And, and his idea, even, see, just because you cross over doesn't mean you automatically become enlightened or anything right. like that. Right. So your consciousness is where you are. Right. And so his belief as a soul was that only people who die from the physical right. body hang out with people like him and, right. and you know right. those who have departed. Right. And so every night I give lectures on the astral planes to two people. And and some of those are dead people. <laughs> Others so he was are in your class and wasn't liking it. Exactly, yeah. What is this? <laughs> he wanted a rewrite. <laughs> I want a refund and I want a new teacher. This exactly. is not working. <laughs> so he was worried that well, th that could only mean one thing. He's going to die soon, to die soon right, and, right. and, and, and leave my daughter daughter's going right. to be a widow. You right. know? And so I had to go and, and, and reassure him. That, Everything's yeah, okay. I, no such luck yet. <laughs> right, right. So. so, I mean, and you see this, I mean, and also like children are coming in mm. more gifted, more in tune, less apt to be knocked off, less apt to... Yes. It's, Forget, not yeah. remember, like we were talking last yeah. night at the opening. Oh, it's it's phenomenal, and this is just the beginning. It's been happening more and more, right. and so there's people in the world who are calling them different names: indigo children, and rainbow, crystal children, right. rainbow, and right. all kinds. Uh, but this has been happening for a long time, and yet not in this mass quantity. Uh, there's kids in China that's documented walking through walls, physical walls, uh, growing, you know, right in front of your eyes. They like can crystal uh, little seeds, flower seeds, and it grows into a full flower in seconds. Right. You know, and they just go grow, and it goes. <laughs> it's, there's all kinds of those are kind of like parlor tricks, but it's it's some of these kids have that those kinds of abilities develop so well so certainly the, changes the knowing exactly breaks down the, the, the whole the belief, belief that system. oh you can't do that right and right. so more and more people are doing children and adults are are doing and experiencing things that formerly were supposed to be no 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 that never happens and this is one of the things that's going to be very intense people who are not prepared for this might feel like they're going crazy you know, it's not only the world's going so fast, but they're going, 
wait a minute, what just happened? I can't, I can't. It's not within it. my range of conception. It blows their mind. It blows their mind. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I, I tell people, I says, well, my mind's been long yeah, right. gone. Longer, exactly. <laughs> so right. I don't have that problem. You know, we were talking last night. I mean, if for one minute you can remember that we're hurtling through space on a ball, the whole thing is unreasonable. Exactly. You know, so, <laughs> so why try to make something reasonable that's inherently unreasonable? Yes. Okay, maybe... You will think about like maybe we'll do a healing or you know some kind of teaching for the next section. But we're going to do the uh, Jonathan Quinton video. It's a you know sacred geometry video. It's called Visions of Eternity. Jonathan Quinton. Okay, here it is.
Hi, welcome back, everybody. We're back with Michael. But the new picture we have for the, from the Bridging Heaven and Earth uh, Art Project is Rising by Michelle Zazalek. And, you know, it's just another incredible piece. So we're just so delighted. So we're back with Michael. So you, we decided that, you know, maybe we'll do a healing. So why don't you just go into that and, you know, describe what you want to do and what your intention is. And all. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah, well, um, I thought we'll do an experiment a little bit with um, walking through the audience during the break. Um, there's so much of what we were talking about earlier in terms of the overwhelming growth and change. And a lot of it has to do with this um, rising up of the consciousness of the feminine. And it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, but the feminine aspect of being, which is receptive. And so there's a tremendous thing happening around the world in terms of receptivity. How, it, all the receptivity levels of our being is being challenged. If there's, there's resistance there, if there's a lot of pain involved in, in the areas of the receptive part of one's being, and it's stored there, then a person doesn't want to receive. It resists receiving, receiving anything even good. <clears throat> and so often we have a tendency when we feel negativity, when we feel pain in the receptive aspects of our being, um, we tend to blame the receptive aspect of our being instead of, oh, it's just negative energy that's in the receptive area. Uh, so, so we kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater. So what I like to do with this little experiment is both in the studio audience and those who are viewing this show, we'll do a little experiment of what happens when you are in a place of receptivity and, and I'm going to be bringing forth uh, this healing energy and see what happens with each person, how they experience it and how many kind of different levels of healing can happen. It's, it'll be a, uh, a mass healing, okay? a group healing. So. For those of you watching this show, um, <clears throat> one of the things about receiving a healing, giving a healing in some ways for me is so much easier. Receiving it sometimes is the difficult part because in receiving a healing, you have to become receptive, you have to open up. And this is one of the things that for many people, it's the hardest thing to do. So one of the things that would help in being able to be more receptive, if you would like to have uh, a healing during this next few minutes, then what I'd like you to do is to just kind of go ahead and close your eyes and get comfortable, preferably sitting in a chair like this with your feet on the floor. And what I'd like you to do is, um, as you close your eyes, decide to be, have your awareness behind your eyes, behind your eyes in the center of your head. And just relax. Just give yourselves a breath. And then, if you'll go ahead and imagine that right around from the tip of your tailbone, right above the tip of your tailbone is an energy center. And from this energy center, just imagine this post or a tree trunk, beautiful, huge tree trunk coming down from that area right above the tip of your spine all the way down to the center of the earth. This is your grounding. And as you ground this way, just imagine that you're going to let go of any energies you've been carrying around, extra baggage of other people's problems and, and things that really do no good for you. And just go ahead and decide you're going to release that. And let that all flow down this grounding. It just falls down like water or sand coming down a tube. And it goes down all the way into the center of the earth. Another way you could imagine it is all throughout your body and in your space and your being, imagine that wherever you are holding energy, holding tension, holding negativity, holding pain, anything that you would like to be free of, then imagine that there's little psychic hands, little tiny psychic hands in a fist holding all this energy. And notice where they show up 
There might be a concentration of these little fists holding energy in your hips or in your back, in your shoulders or in your head somewhere. And so where they show up is where you are tending to hold on to quite a bit of this energy. So then wave at these little hands and they'll wave back. And as they wave back, they open the fist and let go of all this energy. And it goes dropping down that grounding again, all the way to the center of the earth. And just notice for a moment what happens as you release all this energy that's been held in your space, in your energy consciousness, and it's all being grounded. And as it reaches the center of the earth, they'll just recycle, become usable energy again. Now, as you are grounded this way, again, be aware behind your eyes and just validate that you are, that you exist that you are aware that you are energy everything is energy your thoughts are energy your feelings are energy your body is energy everything's energy just realize it's all energy and now would you just decide that you can ask for healing you can ask to be to receive healing and all healing comes from within you as the spirit that you are, as the spiritual beingness that you are, the oneness of being that Alan was introducing this show time and again from. So just say hello to that inner being, to your inner self, and just decide, yes, you're able to receive, you can have healing on whatever level that you have been dif having difficulty because healing is restoring to wholeness, to that oneness. So the areas where you have had challenges and difficulties are areas where there's resistance, where you have been divided against yourself, whether consciously or unconsciously. So just decide that you can let go of anything that is not helping you, anything that is keeping you from your wholeness, taking more steps toward being more whole. And what I'm going to do for the next few minutes is be silent and I'm going to bring forth a healing energy. And this healing energy has no time or space. It's not a barrier, whether the show you're watching today or tomorrow or next year, it doesn't matter. But as you're watching this show, as you're tuning in, you'll be tuning into this healing, especially if you're being in this receptive. Say hello to the receptive part of your being. This is the part that ends up suffering a lot or most because of what it receives. So in this situation, you're setting up receiving healing for this very receptive, very sensitive, gentle part of your soul. So just relax and notice what happens over the course of the next couple of minutes. Some of you might experience a touch, something like somebody around you working with you. And this is not just your imagination. This is part of the healing of spirit.
sometimes one of the more difficult challenges of receiving healing and continuing to bring forth this healing energy and you may notice changes happening as I talk but one of the more uh, difficult challenges of receiving healing is as the healing energy starts to restore your spirit you to wholeness the divisions start to dissolve the divisions sometimes feel like they're being torn away pain starts to release from those areas that were formerly divided and as this starts to surface sometimes a person may mm, experience that as oh no it's starting to hurt or or I don't feel it's feeling worse whatever these are all the energies that's coming out and surfacing just bring your awareness to the new energy the the part of you that's becoming more whole more relaxed more positive and let the energies the negative levels the pain and the negative levels start to surface and release a lot of it will be just grounding off through your grounding uh, uh, tree trunk or tube that you have created. Just let all that go. The new energy is coming in. And each time as you start to get afraid or start to resist anything that's coming out, then if you would say hello to that and just let it give, give it lots of space, a lot of room to move. If you clamp down, if you resist it, it holds it down. But if you say hello and give it lots of space lots of room to flow through this is all old things it's not anything happening to you now that's negative it's all old levels that you have held on to most of which you might find are not even yours that's why you've never been able to solve it problems that are not yours you can't solve for somebody else you can help a person solve their own problems but you can't solve it for them so just decide you can release all that and as we go continue through the rest of the show i'm going to continue to keep this energy going so those of you who are watching you may notice the ceiling will continue and it will continue long after this show is over this energy will continue to uh, work with you and know that you can ask for this healing anytime it's all comes from within your own being Thank you. Very beautiful. You know, it was interesting. I mean, while it was happening, I mean, you've done a lot of, you know, different types of healings on the show. And, and we've had, you know, other really extraordinary people do healings. But it seemed to me that there was a certain receptivity, you know, both in, you know, the studio audience of about 100 and mm -hmm. just energetically the whole oh, planet. Yes. Have you noticed that? I mean, travel the world doing... Yes, there's people are m way more open to healing. And I think this is also part of the thing we were talking about earlier, where, where people who have been uh, studying, practicing, meditating, becoming more aware, have less fear. And one of the things I never really experienced, I never knew how much fear there is toward healing, to, to receiving healing. And... Um, uh, it was funny uh, when I was taking groups of people to the Philippines to see the faith healers there and especially what's called the psychic surgeons very uh, amazing type of healing where they actually enter into a person's body with their bare hands and open it up blood is gushing and they materialize things out of the body that's negativity and, and throw it out and it all heals up again and so when I was taking groups of psychics and healers uh, to experience this type of healing and I would prepare them for several months before the trip uh, in workshops and Raphael after a couple of uh, trips suggested says well you should work with them on their fear <laughs> being kind of clueless sometimes I, I go oh fear of traveling to a foreign country <laughs> fear of flying you know I, I didn't know quite what she was talking about and she laughed and she says no 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 fear of having this kind of healing and I says well why would anybody be afraid of having a healing it's a good thing it, you know it's it's wonderful right. and she says yes but most people are very afraid of somebody i mean being naked in front of a total stranger who then puts his hand right into your body and blood starts squirting out and i go really <laughs> it was it was great it was a revelation and i thought about it and i looked at it and 
sure enough, you know, it's not even the blood and guts. It was just the energy of the healing because healing opens you up. So it was almost feel like an invasion with fear of an invasion. Yes, fear of because if if you're protecting yourself against invasion because you feel vulnerable and and you're not certain of your immortality, you're not certain of of your indivisibility. It's, there's no way that you could be as a real spiritual being. You could be injured. The body could be injured, but, obviously but be injured, the right. being yourself cannot be injured. And so once you have more and more established your center in your beingness, then you start to have that awareness of, oh, nothing could really hurt me. And so then you're not resisting any seeming invasion or seeming attack or anything and and so then it doesn't injure you uh it's only when it's you resistance, resist resistance, that injures right. you yes even on the psychic level and a subtle level uh what happens what why a sensitive person goes oh this person threw me so much anger and hate and oh i'm bowled me over and i have a headache and i can't you know everything what really happens is Yes, people throw negative energies all over the place. And, and when psychic, negative psychic energy comes, it, it comes into your field like this. But if you don't resist it, it just passes right, right by. Right. And you it's go, like a thought. If you don't hang on to it, it doesn't do any anything, damage. Yeah. And so then you go, wow, that person was really angry at me. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Well, what did I do now? <laughs> yeah, what did I deserve to have <laughs> that? And, and, well, I'll tell you what, we got like 45 seconds. Oh, so okay. if you want some you know the people to have an experience or some you know piece of information in like 15 10 seconds what last yes. thing to say, say okay it. so then if you don't resist so resistance comes up like this and then what hits you is your own energy not right. the other person and that's the fullness yes so again literally whatever you think you are you're bigger remember whatever you think you are you're more much more your love in motion. Good night. God bless you. Thanks for coming. You know, we love you. Good night.